if I let go of the how with letting like the magic happen in those outcomes and not 100% attached to what the outcome is, but knowing this is the direction I want to go, that was... Hello and welcome to Finding Your Spark Again. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Today I have with me Tracy Austin, founder and CEO of Elevated Talent Consulting. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, Donalyn. It's great to be here with you. Thank you. It's great to have you. I'm very excited today to talk about finding your spark and what that looks like when life kind of throws some unexpected curves at you. So I know you have walked through some things in the last little while, and I'd love to talk to you about that today. Let's just start with kind of tell us a little bit about you and, and your business and what's going on. Absolutely. So, um, you know, a little bit about me is I'm going to start with, I think, probably the most important things and um, or people, so to say, is I have a junior and senior in high school that so I've got two boys and they are on their path of where they want to go in life. And that doesn't always happen. And so um that's that's a little bit about me personally. Um, I've been in human resources for about a little over 20 years, and I've um, I founded Elevated Talent Consulting six years ago, really with the intention of working with leaders to create the container for their staff to be fulfilled in the work that they do. That's, uh, you know, when you're working with people and you want them to understand what might be fulfilling for them. You really have to do a lot of personal work, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because what what we do on the inside reflects out. And if we're projecting on others what our own insecurities are, it's not going to go very well, right? So as leaders and organizations, we have to do the inside work before we can really support others. Yeah. Definitely. So let's talk a little bit about this last year for you. Absolutely. You know, so what's before I get into that, one of the things I want to name that I've learned so much um, in my career as human resources and running my business is, you know, there's something called seasons of life. And, you know, it's like when you think you get right out of college and you're like, I'm going to climb that career ladder, you are just like, full charge going, or you get married, or you have kids, or all those things, there's these seasons that impact what work is. And through all those seasons, it's also sitting back and looking at who am I and what is it that I really need um, in order to best serve others. And so, you know, for me, this last year has been so much about finding the spark for me as why am I doing this, right? Like, am I parenting the way I want to parent? Am I leading in my organization the way that I want to lead? Am I doing the work that's really impactful and fulfilling that I want to do? And so, so that's a little bit about kind of, you know, the framing for my last year. Yeah. So you're really talking about being intentional, and that's a that's a piece that not everybody gets right that there are these sort of seasons as you've as you've talked about there are these seasons of life where you are naturally in a different place but we are also and that makes us very intentional in that that time of our lives for whatever the decisions are right we know that career is prioritized or family is prioritized and it's super easy to understand um but we also can be really proactive in that intention. And so I love that we're kind of bringing that to light because I know that um, when things don't go as we had hoped, when we're in a season and then suddenly we're in another season, right? We did not want to go here. This did not, this was not on the plan, right? That, um, that, Finding the those questions that you're talking about, finding that way to tap into being intentional again is so important. And it's one of the reasons that I wanted to speak with you about this, because you have uh, quite a bit of clarity around the process that you went through and how you went through it. So 
Yeah, I cannot wait to hear about what that transition has been like for you. So, you know, for for me, the season of life over this last year is my divorce was finalized in June. It was a 21 year relationship that had ended. And with that, it was also saying, hey, what do I want my business to be? How do I restructure it so that it's fulfilling to what what is important to me and is also authentic? How do I want to show up for my kids? How do I want to show up in my community? And so for me, sometimes those rock bottoms that come out of absolutely nowhere, even though when you look back, you're like, all of the signs were there. Why didn't I see them? Guess what? I can't focus on that. What I can focus on is what do I want to create? And for me, it was really asking those questions of who do I want to be and how do I want to do that? Sometimes it's the process to find the spark of, you know, you, you've got the grieving process, right, of let's go through that, but also where do I want to go? Because what I know is, um, you know, I had a manager at one point in time that would always say to me, you know, Tracy, you can vi visit Pity City, but you can't take up residence. <laughs> You know, so it's like you can visit Pity City, but you can't take up residence. And how does that align with finding your spark? I'm going to share that. You know, so there's times where, and I think for all of us, it's not just times, we have to fully feel our emotions. What are those things that are actually happening instead of stuffing it and not feeling it? Because then it comes out sideways later is let me just feel all of these things that are happening. And now what do I want to do with it? Because what I know is that pain or anger or resentment or any of those emotions, they're there for a reason. If I'm annoyed, I'm annoyed for a reason. So if I can figure out why I'm annoyed and actually get clear on that, now I can create an action plan for what I want to do with it to get to where I want to go. And that you know, I actually made that into a fun little game. That was so much of like, all right. I'm going to get out of bed today and do this thing, what's going to make it meaningful? What, what's most important to me? And for me, it was figuring out what are those core values that are the most important for me? And then when I run everything through that, now I know that the work's meaningful for me. So for me, it's adventure, it's expansion, it's connection. You know, when I have those things, both in life and in work, because it's all the same pot of soup, now everything is going to go through that lens. Yeah, I loved a lot about what you just said. Um, you know, one of the things that I think people don't realize is that rock bottoms are often springboards. They're not rock bottoms. There's nothing rock about it, right? You sprung down there and you're springing back up. And and it's only if we stay in that state uh, um that it becomes a rock bottom, right? A place that is hard to get out of. Right. You mean uh, pity if, city. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And I also love that you said pity city because, uh, you know, I have this whole visualization and a quiz on my website and everything about a roadmap, right? And, and if you visualize emotions in the form of a roadmap, it becomes really easy to understand that you're not going to get from anger, depression, uh, self-worth issues. You're not going to get from pity city all the way to overjoyed without going through some other towns along the way. Right. And that, and that you can't, if you go there, if you find your way, if you go like, Oh, I'm funny, it's great. That is very temporary and often is very detrimental to your actual progress. So this idea of how do we work our way, right? How do we acknowledge where we are, work with our bodies, work ourselves, work with ourselves to get to a different place on that map. So key. It's such a big key. And, uh, and I'm so glad that you brought it up. Yeah. And you know, Donalyn, I think that there's another piece to this with emotions. So I have a belief, you know, and beliefs become so important within this because what we think becomes what we feel and what we feel impacts how we act and those results. You know, but I have this belief that life is 50-50. It's going to be 50-50 crappy and it's going to be 50-50 amazing, right? And 
the reason why I bring this up is it's when we can feel any emotion and experience that, guess what? We can also feel the really good emotions. And one of the things I really realized over this last year is that I had done so much to degrade myself to not see the things that I did really, really great because of, you know, hundred, hundred reasons. But within that, when we can know, Hey, if life's 50, 50, it's going to be 50, 50, not great. And 50, 50, great. Guess what? Now I can feel any emotion. I can determine what is the outcome I want to start to create the path towards that. And then I'm not avoiding the negative emotions and those, whether it's joy or, you know, whatever those things are, now I can actually accept that. I can accept a compliment. I can accept when I get that feedback versus pushing it away. And I think that that's a key to finding what the spark is because then you can truly feel the joy, but you can also truly feel what those negative emotions are as well. Yeah, it's an interesting perspective. Um, I think you're absolutely right that your beliefs, our beliefs shape our experiences, you know? So that expectation brings in whatever it brings in for you. And I do like that you're talking about getting to know yourself in order to find that spark, right? Because asking some of those questions about who am I, who do I want to be, what am I experiencing right now? And what does that springboard bring for me? Where do I go from here? Those are big questions. So tell me a little bit about how, how you went through those questions. Yeah. So I, so I went through those questions with a couple things. First is I, you know, I'm somebody that is an achiever, you know, so I went and got two coaching certifications. <laughs> But, you know, so I laugh at that. But at the same time, what that did is it allowed me to really process and learn how to process things. Um, you know, and I think with any of those, you know, figuring out who you are, guess what? We can't do that on our own because we're only going to see the things that we want to see. And so having that mirror, I think, is incredibly important in whatever way that is, whether that's a coach, whether, you know, whatever that is. Um, so that's one of those ways, you know, another way that I really went through that is journaling is so, so incredibly powerful. And for me, it was, you know, not just the goal setting side of it, but I put some intentional practices into my day of, um, I set up just gratitude every morning. Hey, what am I grateful for? Because I would wake up with all of the negatives and then I was not very fun to be with, right? So like, what are those things that um, you're grateful for? And so that was one. And I think the second for me was um, control. You know, when we think that we have to control everything, we're not actually controlling anything. And the only thing that we can control is ourselves. We can't control any other outcome. So for me, it was this huge realization around control and it, how do I give up that tight white knuckling of life into accepting what shows up? And, you know, that again is another belief. If I believe that I am the board, if you think about a board game, if I believe that I'm the board and anything that shows up in my life, I'm responsible for now, I can also be responsible for how I respond to it. So I love this idea of your morning practice. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I always encourage people to do is to ask themselves when they open their eyes, what's good about this moment? And you would not believe the things that people have told me have shifted for them in that just simple one simple practice right there's a lot of times uh you know gratitude practices vary quite a bit and but a lot of times it's hard to find something to actually be grateful for when you're walking through something very dark um because you end up saying things to yourself well i you know i'm not dead so i could be grateful for that i'm still breathing right but they're very low value gratitude when you're in a really dark space sometimes. And so this concept of learning to be present in it and to be present in a positive way, right? In a way that allows you to start to notice those things. 
so important. I'm really, I'm really glad that you brought that kind of morning routine into it. It's really great. You know, one of the things that really came out of this is I have a keynote in a workshop for the organizations that I work with called Creating a Culture of Gratitude. You know, and so really, you know, what happens in our personal life comes absolutely into our work life, right? And so, you know, what I noticed with teams, you know, so for me individually, it's like, hey, when I wake up in the morning, what's one thing I'm grateful for? And sometimes it's, hey, like my dog Gimli came and gave me a kiss, even though his breath really stinks. You know what? He loves me. And that was amazing, right? Or, you know, it it could be that, hey, I got to make, you know, chocolate chip pancakes for my kids this morning and they actually let me make them because they're junior and senior in high school and they're at the age where they know everything and mom knows nothing. So when I get to make chocolate chip pancakes, it's a good morning, right? So it's like the little things that we overlook, you know, it's snowing outside right now and I love I love the snow because of because of the beauty in it and knowing that every single snowflake is not the same as any other. And when we can look at that and, and notice the beauty in the everyday things, now we start to be present in our moments. Yeah, that presence is is a really big key. So let's talk about that other piece that you were talking about uh, in in feeling like you need control. So usually when people have a disaster in their life, whether it's the divorce that's coming or a death in your family or a literal disaster, right? Where somebody got hurt in some sort of accident, right? That what happens is we tighten, we tighten our grip on everything and it makes everything worse, <laughs> right? But it feels like maybe it won't be out of control now. And of course it, it, really goes in the wrong direction when you do that. So that letting go process, that easing, that finding a way to trust yourself and to trust the world again is a really big part of how do we go through the process of finding something really great inside of us because it's all inside of us, right? That that joy that we're seeking, that spark of joy that we're all going like, if I had that right? Then I would feel really good. It's not out there. It's inside you. So uh, how we get there is by going to something that is a lot less than what we're used to, right? It involves less thoughts and less activity. And suddenly there's something there that we never realized before. So I love that you're talking about that, that control mechanism. And I'd love to hear about how you went about uh, doing the letting go. Yeah. So I will say that this is still a process and I don't have it all figured out. So I'll just start with it. <laughs> right. You know, but some of it was, I found, I don't remember where I found it, but I found it was a surrender process. And I'm like, all right, I'll try this for a while. You know, and what I find through anything in life is you have to try things on. But if I try it on with the intention of here's that outcome that I'm looking for, or here's what I want to feel in it. Yes, that's that intentions are, you know, I look at intentions and go, is this control? Isn't it? Well, guess what? If I let go of the how, with letting like the magic happen in those outcomes and not 100% attached to what the outcome is, but knowing this is the direction I want to go, that was almost a baby step for me and saying, okay, how do I let those things go? And it was the same, you know, with my kids and I'm still not great at this, but it's like, hey, if I can let go of what they're doing every day and the scheduling and this and that, and know that they have an amazing foundation and can get there, guess what? I can start to, you know, to let go of the 700 questions. What did you do today? Where did you go? Da, 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 right? Which creates that frantic energy. So one of the things I noticed is when I start in my like 7,000 questions and talking really, really fast, that there's that frantic energy there. And so for me, it was like being the watcher of my own self and saying, hey, what are those things that show up as control? And even like listening to the, I shouldn't say even listening. I think one of the most important things is listening to the feedback of others. 
hey, how does this show up? What's, you know, mom, I really hate it when you do this. Or, you know, one of my team members saying, you know, this is so frustrating when you do this. And then when I think about it, what am I trying to control that creates that? Because within all of those negative things, guess what? There's, that's when it was like the white knuckling of life. Yeah. So you walked through something really difficult in the middle of that, right? Because this divorce is such a, an immense rejection, even when it's a good thing for both parties, right? It's two people who at one point in their lives said, yeah, 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 we want to do this together, right? And uh, and now are saying, yeah, we want to do this apart. <laughs> we don't want to be part of the same thing. And so uh, can you talk a little bit about how that impacts the ability to 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 do the letting go, to trust in yourself and how you walk through that? I think the first step the first thing for me is was acceptance. So, you know, there I keynoted a conference um, and it was in Hilton Head, which was the most beautiful place to make a decision to be able to process. I walked 41 miles on the beach in three days. And the reason why I say that is it was not following kind of the plan I had. Yes, I did my keynote. I did all the things. Um, but I took that time to to be with myself and just to say, all right, if I accept that this is here, because I think part of control is we're not accepting what the facts are. And that first step for me that I found is I had to accept what the facts were. So here are the facts. Here's my decision. Here's the decisions that are being made. Here's how I want to show up through this process. And here's the things that are most important for me and the outcomes of this. Um, so when I can at least have that North Star as to what it is, then let go of, you know, how that happens. Peter Black's book is one of those that was such a touchstone for me of letting go, um, you know, and just saying, all right, if yes is the answer, then I'm going to let go of the how and focus on what's most important. And that was, I'm going to accept what's here and I'm going to, and, and then I'm going to choose to figure out what is it that I want to need? Because what I found is it wasn't at all what I thought it was. That's really fascinating. Now, tell me, what did you discover about yourself? What was it that you didn't think it would be? There were so many things that I discovered, right? One is what I was doing wasn't because I wanted necessarily to do it. It was like, hey, when I get anxious or this or that, I will start working. Or, you know, when I, um, when I don't want to feel something, I'll go dive head into something. Or, hey, I could actually relax and it's okay to sit down and read a book. Like, it's okay to do that. You know, it's it's finding the things like I, you know, I love to cook or, you know, and so for me, it was finding those things that bring me joy that hadn't brought me joy for whatever reason up until then. And it was also saying, hey, you know, so often we get asked the question of what are your hobbies? And I would love to ask this to your audience is what are your hobbies? Like what do you do just because that there's no money attached to it. There's no expectation attached to it. What is that hobby that you have, you know? And some for me, it was looking back and saying, what have I loved to do that I, I haven't done? And that was photography. And I mean, I was the photo editor my senior year in high school when we actually still, you know, took the photos and developed them real, not all digital. Um, and there's an art to that, you know? So it's like, what are those things that created spark for me growing up that I haven't done in years? You know, whether that's hiking, you know, I took my kids when we went to Acadia National Park and I went and did the beehive hike by myself at 5 a.m. And that was like, what is it that I want to do for me? Like, I'm going to Iceland in three weeks by myself just because a, I want to, it's been a bucket list item, but there's a photography piece to it. But it was, how do I start to say yes to me and let go of the other things that allow me to 
allow things to play out how they're going to and trust that everything is going to turn out okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. Uh, you know, you really talked about not n allowing yourself not to know the answer, right? You talked about allowing yourself to try stuff so many times, particularly when we're hurt, you know, it's easy to go like, well, I tried that and whatever, I can't do it or I didn't like it or it's not for me. I remember deciding, but do you really remember deciding that or do you just, is it just like in the column of no for no reason, right? And there is something about that rediscovering yourself that when you let go, just the way you talked about when you say, okay, I'm just willing to not know. I'm willing to go and try that. And I know, you know, a couple of years ago, my uh, husband passed away and that process of coming back into the world after a bunch of things had fallen away for me, um, including him, was like, I don't know who I am. I don't know. Let's see. I mean, I know who I've been, but I don't know if I like this or this or this on my own, particularly in marriages, right? So when a marriage ends... There's so many decisions that you have made for that time period that are we decisions. They're not I decisions, right? And when you make a bunch of we decisions, sometimes when you're just completely on your own, it's really hard to know. Was that, did I, did I decide that because it was easy to decide that inside this relationship that I was in? Or did I decide that because it's really at my core, the yes or the no? And I love that you're bringing that up. I think that was very much uh, a part of the process for me of finding a place to live. So I, uh, my, my husband passed away and my household. So, and I didn't have any in-person clients. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I just had no reason to be where I was and no way to really be where I was, right? And so that, that process you're talking about of let's just see what that is and see what that is and see what that is and see if I like it. So important in terms of finding the spark, finding a little joy along the way. Yeah. When what we thought was our world completely changes, all of a sudden there's all of these things that pop up that we have to do. And one of the, and I'm not sure where this fits into this, but I feel like it's important. So I'm going to name it. But there were all of these shoulds. I should do it this way. I should know how to do this. Um, you know, like early on, this was, I don't know, February, March, like right after, you know, um, my ex had moved out, the kids and I were sitting here trying to figure out how to use a screw gun, um, how to use a drill. And it took us a half an hour to figure out how to get the drill bit in the drill. And I'm sitting here going, I should know how to do this. But these little moments of shoulds for me, of letting go of the shoulds, because there really aren't any shoulds. Like the first time I walked into Home Depot by myself, which I never went to Home Depot. I never went to the hardware store. And now, you know, like two weeks ago, I fixed two toilets. I'm like, oh my God, I just fixed two toilets. And then I'm like, yeah, well, it would only take him 10 minutes and it took you four hours. I'm like, shut up. Like, seriously, that is not needed there. Like, and so it's like when we have these little da 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 da, -da in our head, part of finding the joy is saying, I'm going to choose not to listen to that because I'm not going to give you any of that airtime. Because you know what? I just fixed two toilets, so I've never done that before. And I figured out how to use a drill. And I figured out I really like the color teal. And I bought a teal couch. And like, that would have never happened before. But that's the rediscovery of just being curious about it. Yeah, yeah. I love the drill story. I have a lot of drill stories uh, after, after I was on my own where, like, there was this, I put together this piece and... <laughs> And I, I, for some reason, it just wouldn't go past a certain amount. And I was like, you know, you had jobs when you were younger that depended on a drill. You can't not know how to use a drill. And uh, finally, after, I don't know, I had people come in and help me move things. And I said, listen, could you just look at this and see if you could help me tighten it up? And the guy said, I said, what did I do wrong? He said, oh, there's a clutch. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So... Like, okay, okay, so now I have to relearn these skills that I used to have, but I don't have them. And then once I've relearned them, I have to ask myself, are they for me? Do I even care 
would I rather just pick up the phone and say, I want my world to be like this. Could you make it like that, please? Right. But but that whole discovery process, right, being willing to figure out how the drill bit fits in the drill and to do the work and to get your hands in there and say, hey, I'm going to be independent and then decide what parts I like and don't like. So important, so good, really good. Well, I will say our time is just about at an end here. So I so appreciate you talking to us today. And uh, please let, let our listeners know how they can get in touch with you. Absolutely. So I am on LinkedIn, um, Tracy Austin. And um, you can find me on our website, which is ElevatedTalentConsulting.com. Um, and Donalyn, I love how you have a roadmap because we also have a roadmap called the People Strategy Roadmap. So if you are, you know, growing your business and really looking for that people strategy, we'd love to have that conversation. Super. Well, thank you so much for being here. As always, I want to remind you guys that you can go to donalyn.blog to get free gifts and uh, PDFs and all sorts of things, a nice quiz as we talked about. So head over there. There's even a way to get directly in touch with me. So thank you so much for spending this time with us and I'll see you next time.